So in this final video of this lecture, we're going to entitle the next flowchart AP Conduction 2. And what we're going to do here is look and highlight specifically a structure that's very much involved in this process of conduction, in this process of propagating an action potential down the axon, and that is a structure known as myelin sheath. So the myelin sheath We'll go over a bit of background first to understand what we're really referring to in terms of what this structure is all about. In terms of background, take a look at figure 48.13 to get a good idea of what a myelin sheath looks like. Now, what we really want to understand about this structure is overall what is its purpose. Its overall purpose is pretty simple. It acts as insulation. Myelin sheath is essentially electrical insulation, just like every wire that you use is insulated, it has covering over it, the neurons that you have, the nerves that you have, have a covering over them as well. And it's going to be an electrical insulation that surrounds the axon. Purpose of this is to insulate the axon. And in order to insulate the axon, you need to have some sort of covering around it. That covering is called myelin sheath. Now, how does this come about? Where does this come from? The myelin sheath is produced by two types of glial cells. Okay, this is a new term here, G-L-I-A-L, -L, glial cells. Glial cells are just directly translated to glue cells, and these are just supporting cells of the nervous system. If you would consider the main players of the nervous system, the main functional unit, let's say a neuron, and neurons combine together to give you nerves, these nerves are helped out by these glue cells that are really close to them. That's why the name glial cell is called glial cells. And there are two types dependent on what part of the nervous system you're looking at. The glial cells may be oligodendrocytes. So these are going to be structures that are found within the central nervous system. So the nerves of the central nervous system, the neurons, will be sort of protected and supported by these glial cells called oligodendrocytes. And then there will also be the other ones called Schwann cells, named after the person who discovered them. These will be found in the peripheral nervous system, and a nerve will have these glial cells surrounding and insulating the Schwann, the peripheral nerves. And those would be the Schwann cells surround peripheral nerves. Oligodendrocytes surround central nerves. Okay, let's take a look now in a little bit more detail what myelin and sheath actually does for the overall conductatory process. So here what we're going to state is the following. The axon plasma membrane is going to be rich in this, in this uh, let's say, in this structure called the myelin. Okay, myelin is going to be found on the axon specifically surrounding the plasma membrane. Spe now, what we want to notice about this structure, this sheath, this surrounding insulator, is that its color typically will be white. It's typically a white-colored structure. It's very visible underneath the microscope. Um, it's a white-colored lipid that's produced by the glial cells, like we said. Depends on which part of the nervous system you're talking about to know which glial cells, but generally speaking, it's produced by glial cells, and, and these glial cells are directly wrapped around the axon. So they're very closely and intimately wrapped around this axon structure, and they're producing myelin, and when they're producing this myelin lipid-like structure, they're promoting what we know as conduction. Now, how can they do that? How is this possible? It's all about the idea of the structure of myelin and sheath and how it promotes conduction through its specific structure. So again, structure is directly related to function here. So let's take a look at something. When we look at figure 48.13, what you'll notice is that you will be presented with structures called internodes. Internodes, broadly speaking, and just in terms of a definition, are going to be regions of this axon 
in question, let's say, regions of any axon covered by glial cells. So they are indeed covered by glial cells. So these are going to be an axon that's very much wrapped around by oligodendrocytes or Schwann cells, and that's going to be an internode. Now, in between uh, internodes, in between them, there are going to be these gaps in the myelin sheath, and those are going to be called the nodes of Ranvier, for the French guy who found out what these were. He saw these empty pockets, empty sections of the neuron, and he called them, after himself, the nodes of Ranvier. Now these are, simply speaking, gaps in the myelin sheath. Basically anywhere an internode is empty, where there is no covering, and these gaps in the myelin sheath seem counterintuitive. Shouldn't you want every part of this axon structure to be electrically, you know, uh, covered and insulated correctly, and it seems like that's what you would want, but that's not what we see. What we see instead is, if we imagine this being an axon, right, what we see instead is some myelin sheath covering it like this, okay, this may be an oligodendrocyte, and we're covering the axon with the myelin sheath, and then we'll see another myelin sheath right next to it like this, but what's weird is that there are going to be these empty spots without any myelin sheath. So I'm going to draw a little bit more myelin, this fatty lipid material. There's these empty spots here. Why are they empty? Why aren't they all covered in myelin? These are nodes of Ranvier, these empty spots. These are internodes where we do have myelin sheath covered. These gaps are going to be important, and we'll cover that in just a second. What we're going to notice first is, let's talk about something that's unmyelinated. If we have a structure that's unmyelinated, okay, unmyelinated axons will have the following consequences. First of all, they won't be white. They'll be gray in color, and thus we call unmyelinated axons gray matter. They're going to have a process known as continuous conduction occur within them. And this sounds good on the onset. On the outside, it sounds like, yeah, it should be good to always be conducting. But what you'll notice is that because of continuous conduction, every spot, every single part along the neuron is going to have to depolarize and repolarize. A long neuron depolarizes and then eventually repolarizes back to its original state. This sounds good, but if it happens at every single part of the axon, believe it or not, this is very much hard work. This involves a lot of energy, it involves a lot of time, and it's just sort of an inefficient way of traveling or propagating a message. There's got to be a better way to conduct a message as opposed to this continuous conduction because it takes so much time to depolarize and repolarize, to do the rising and falling, rising and falling, through every single inch of the axon. What if there was a way to sort of jump from one part of the axon to the other? 